Thank you, Tom, for a lovely introduction. And uh, when I was here last year, they did wonder, what would an analyst have to do with design? The last presentation, he talked about uh, accents, language, northern Mexico, southern Mexico. And I'll tell you a little story uh, to introduce his idea. I grew up in Brooklyn. Brooklyn, New York, a big Sicilian, southern Italian neighborhood. And we grew up speaking dialect. I go to Italy. I've been teaching in Italy now for the past 20 years every summer. And when I begin talking regular Italian, people say, you know, Michael, you're cultured. You're, you're fun to be around. You're interesting. And then when I get comfortable, I start talking dialect. And people say, my God, suddenly you're like a different person. You almost sound like a street urchin. Almost like one of what they call a malandrina. A malandrina are the street people, the, the longshoremen, the truck workers. And I realized, and they said, you know, you're not as interesting to us when you're like this. <laughs> and, and first I thought, I didn't understand it. And then it dawned on me, <clears throat> the dialect I learned come from the street peasants of southern Italy. The longshoremen, the truck drivers, the waiters the people of the earth, what they call the terroni, the people of the earth. And what you begin to find is even with the subtle accents, there's a whole new orientation one has, a whole new way of approaching you, where if you speak more regular Italian or probably a different kind of Mexican or Spanish, you're, you're apprehended differently by people. And when I began to look at this, I realized this fits in so much with my work on fields. And <clears throat> what I've done, I've been an analyst for almost 30 years. And what I've been studying, as Tom said in his introduction, is imagistic and symbolic coherence. And what that really means is that every image is an expression of something, of a field. In the same way, when you look at the development of the human body, different parts are coming out of a code that's in the body. There's a morphogenetic code. There's a biological code. It's the same thing with images. I'm sure everybody in this room is involved in trying to find the, that one image, that one sound, that one sound bite that's going to really draw your audience to your new product. Whether it's a product of Procter & Gamble or with uh, Adidas or with Nike. And what happens is we begin to look at images and we, we begin to appropriate to the image what we want it to be. For me, this image could mean X and Y and Z. And when I was here last year, I demonstrated by way of a movie clip from... Um, Disney's Hercules, that you can't mess with images. Because images are expressions of a field, and the field has stable configuration and stable issues to the field. In other words, when, they, when Disney did Hercules, it basically was a merchandising uh, adventure. And what they did was they took a myth, and they took tremendous liberties, and they changed the storyline. It was no longer about heroes. It was no longer about human dignity. It was about something else. Like there's one scene which is unbelievable where Hercules finishes his trials of learning to be a hero. He has his mentors, which is played by Danny DeVito, which is quite interesting. Um, and then one day he comes into a village and he's prepared to be the hero. Right? And these two kids run up to him and they say, oh, oh stranger, would you help us? And he said, sure, what is it? He said, two kids are trapped are trapped in a cave and they can't get out. Could you please help us? And he says, this is wonderful. I am so glad I could, these kids are trapped because now I could be a hero. And I thought, this is despicable. Heroes, if you look at the myth and the storyline of heroes from the beginning of time, heroes were never about self-aggrandizement. They were about the, uh, the keepers of morality, the keepers of the wisdom tradition, and they had human dignity. So if you take the field, and that's, that's a word I've been developing for over almost 25, 30 years now, that there are these fields that have very specific properties to them, like a hero, like mothers, like fathers, or in the imagistic world, the image of a peace symbol, an image of a circle, an image of a square. These are things that have rich traditions that are going to affect the audience one way or another. What we tend to do is we begin to morph the image into our own needs. And what you're going to find is that when there's a coherent representation of an image, the audience is going to be drawn to it. When there's an inconsistent representation, as demonstrated by Hercules, and it was one of the worst grossing films in the history of Disney. I, and I can tell you why. It's because they didn't honor the tradition out of which the image emerged. 
Now, David and I have been talking about coherence for many years. He's from the film industry, so he began a lot of his work. <clears throat> and I've been now working in the film industry. And I'm very proud to say one of the major movies I worked on premieres, comes out today in New York called Pride and Glory. And they brought me in to look at the characters and look at the arc of a character. Would this character do such and such? And you begin to find that the really creative designers and writers and producers have this sense of a natural storyline where things begin to fit. And they're able to see things that don't fit. And I've been brought on two different movies. That one, another one called Deception, I worked on last year. And they said the ending didn't work. And the ending didn't work because they had the character written, the writing of the character that was totally inconsistent with what would happen in human nature. And this is where the work of a Jungian analyst who looks at symbols and human nature comes in because we're looking at eternal behaviors and proclivities.